everyone, my name is Charlotte Smith. I blog at Charlotte's House, and today I'm gonna show you how my kids and I made this really fun backyard tent. You're not gonna wanna miss it, stay tuned. The only materials you'll need for this tent are about 24 feet of one by two lumber, one four foot three quarter inch dowel, one six by nine foot canvas drop cloth, a three quarter inch drill bit, one eight foot length of lath or something similar, a saw. It was helpful to have a staple gun and a brad nailer, but these aren't really necessary. And if you wanna decorate the canvas like we did, you'll also need some latex paint, craft foam, scrap lumber, and a hot glue gun. Finally, if you wanna make the DIY fire pit, you're gonna need a clay pot, some gravel or river rock, and then food safe steno burners. To begin, we measured and cut the angled pieces of the tent. First, we measured and cut four pieces of wood four feet long. Then I set my miter saw to 28 degrees and angled one end of each piece of wood. Once we'd cut the angles, we needed to cut the cross pieces that would sit on the ground. In order to make sure our tent would fold relatively flat, we needed to make one side of the tent to essentially fit inside the other side of the tent. To achieve this, we cut one piece of wood to 46 and a half inches, and then the other piece to 45 inches. Can you write the word inside on that? Inside. Inside. Once all of our one by twos were cut, it was time to assemble the tent. First step to assembly was to cut three quarter inch circles in the top of all of our four foot angled pieces of wood. I used a three quarter inch Forstner bit. The second step for assembly is to screw the two bottom boards into either end of our angled boards. I used my Craig jig to make pocket holes in either end of the bottom boards, but you could also just pre-drill and use wood screws from the outside of the angled boards. Are there holes? Yes. Yeah. You did it! I lined up the bottom boards with the angle of the side boards and attached with one and a quarter inch Craig screws. I like to get the screws started and then the kids come in to finish them off and tighten them up. The kids have gotten really good at understanding how to work the drill, but I always keep a hand on it to make sure everyone stays safe. Snack break. Last step is to simply hammer the dowel into the holes at the top of the tent as shown. We started by hammering the dowel into the inner side of the tent and then finished by tapping the boards to the outer side of the tent in place. The dowel should be a fairly snug fit. We used a canvas painter's drop cloth for the tent itself, but decided to add a little decorative flair by hand stamping a pattern with DIY rubber stamps. Making our stamps couldn't have been easier. We started by sketching out ideas for the stamp pattern. Both kids came up with polka dots, so we decided that would be a fun stamp to start with. My daughter drew the shapes onto a piece of craft foam and then cut them out. We found that having our stamps be two or three layers of craft foam was best, so I went ahead and traced the shapes she had cut and helped cut out that second layer. To make the stamp, I simply used my hot glue gun to adhere all these pieces to a piece of scrap wood. We protected our work surface with newspaper and then poured a very thin layer of latex paint onto a paper plate. It took a few different tries to get the hang of it, but essentially we were able to dip our stamp into the paint and then make sure there wasn't excess paint and we carefully dabbed it onto the canvas. Once the paint had dried, I went ahead and cut and hemmed the fabric so that not only was there no raw edge, but it was also the perfect 45 inches wide. Don't worry about the length, we're gonna trim that later. To attach the canvas to the tent, I was glad to have both a staple gun and a nail gun, but you can make do without either of these. With the pattern side of the fabric facing away from me, I stapled one end of the canvas along the 45 inch bottom piece of wood. Note that the hem of the fabric is facing inside the tent and it's slightly overlapping the edge of the one by two. To make a clean and taut edge, I placed a thin piece of lath on top of the fabric and nailed it in place. Bring the fabric up and over the dowel at the top of the tent and then staple as tightly as you can along the opposite board on the bottom. Again, make sure the hem of your fabric is facing inside the tent. Add the second piece of lath to help make the tent fabric taut. 
Now's the time to go ahead and trim any excess canvas that you might have. I was able to use a razor blade and I ran it along the edge and it trimmed the canvas off perfectly. I knew that we would be folding these tents up and storing them away, so I went ahead and added a hook and eye closure on the legs. I also added a handle to one side to help with carrying it. Once my kids' imagination kicked in with these, of course they wanted to make s'mores, so we made a really easy DIY fire pit. It's important that you find a food safe burner like these little steno pots, and obviously when you are dealing with open flame, you should carefully supervise your children. Start by filling your pot with small gravel until you're about an inch below the edge of the pot. Go ahead and place the steno burner into the middle, and then we filled in around the burner with these more decorative river rocks. Needless to say, this was the easiest part of the entire project, but probably my kids' favorite detail because marshmallows. I was able to use some of the extra fabric to make some floor pillows so that when we are outside roasting marshmallows, there's somewhere cozy to sit. We had the most fun assembling this little tent, designing our stamps, decorating the fabric, and then assembling the whole thing. I'm not sure if my kids are most excited about their new backyard tent or the possibility of having s'mores whenever they want because of our new DIY little fire pits. One of my favorite features of this project is that it is so easy to put this away. We can fold it up flat, we can bring it into the garage, into our basement. It's a really easy project to set up and play with and then to bring inside when we're done. Make sure you head over to the Home Depot's YouTube channel where you can get all sorts of fun kids workshop tutorials online or you can go to their website and you can get your own kids workshop kits. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day everyone.